Welcome to Living the Smarter Science of Slim, where we provide a scientifically proven lifestyle for long-term health and fat loss by eating more and exercising less, but smarter. Eat smarter, exercise smarter, live better. I am so ready for that. Hey everyone, Jonathan Baylor and Carrie Brown here, Living the Smarter Science of Slim. And folks, I gotta tell you, I just learned some shocking <laughs> news about Carrie Brown. So, Uh-oh. so here's a question, folks. I Uh-oh. want you. Carrie just told me she bought some xylitol, and xylitol is a non-caloric sweetener, which is quite sane. And uh, she told me she bought some xylitol. I was like, oh, yes, Carrie, that's cool. That's cool. How many pounds of xylitol? P- pounds, mind you, of xylitol. <laughs> do you think our dear Carrie Brown purchased? One pound, two pound, ten pounds, twenty pounds? No, dear listeners. <laughs> Carrie purchased fifty-five pounds of xylitol. Apparently, Mount Rainier is going to explode, as she's told me, and she will be able to make sane, sweet dishes For forever years, now. Forever. <laughs> Mount <laughs> Rainier, accepting or not. Oh, my hey, gosh. no, I just took last week's podcast to heart. You told us to buy in bulk. <laughs> so I, you, I take everything you say very seriously, very Jonathan. No, it's, I buy, you know, 25-pound bags of cocoa, so there's no... 55 pounds of xylitol is a new record. Listeners, don't listen to him. Let me tell you what I'm going to do with that xylitol. I'm going to make you sane ice cream and sane cookies and sane cakes, Ooh. and you're going to love me forever. But I had to have a lot of xylitol to do that. <laughs> Clearly. So don't listen to him. <laughs> I love it. Well, speaking of uh, uh, xylitol, so uh, <laughs> the segue was going to make no sense. So hold on. Speaking of xylitol, let's talk about how we need to drink a lot of water and green tea while going sane. That didn't make any sense because I was thinking of something else in my brain. I was thinking of um, other sweeteners, solutions. So I think we may have covered this in other podcasts, but let's cover it again here. So caloric sweeteners, totally insane. So sugar, high fructose corn syrup, agave, nectar, honey, I don't care. All that stuff, bad. There's a list of like 55 different caloric sweeteners on the website. Check them out. They're bad. Non-caloric natural sweeteners, natural non-caloric is key, such as... um, Xylitol is made from birch. Yep. Xylitol, um, stevia, or lohan go are all great options, completely sane. In the middle is artificial non-caloric sweeteners. So these are things like stevia. No, sorry. No, stevia is natural. Things like Splenda, excuse me, sweet and low, equal. These are, you know, if you have to choose between sugar and high fructose corn syrup and honey and, and those things, like a, like a um, Splenda, I would take the Splenda. But again, try to go towards the natural non-caloric ones whenever possible. But of course, you know, if, you, if you're drinking, like Carrie says, like I say, it's about being better and not about being perfect. If you currently drink Coke, drinking Diet Coke is better. Right. So, you know, don't, don't worry about, you don't have to never drink soda again. Just go with the non-caloric sweetened version. But now here is a good segue to step four of the five steps of helping you go sane. Carries Achilles heel. Carries Achilles heel because we were talking about soda. We're going to talk about what you actually should be drinking uh, when you go sane. And this is, this is actually quite important. And the, so just to recap, step number one was to double up on your uh, protein and non-starchy vegetables, potentially even triple up. Step two was to remember your ancestors and to remember that anyone who tries to make being slim and healthy seems complicated is scamming you because we were able to stay slim and healthy for hundreds of thousands of years very, very simply. And that that's not to make us feel bad because we haven't been given this information. We've been lied to, but now we have the information so we can keep slim simple. And step three was to buy things in bulk because that saves us money, saves us time. Like 55 pounds of xylitol. Like 55 <laughs> pounds of xylitol. Free shipping. And I didn't even have to <laughs> go to the like. store. If you if you buy 55 pounds, we'll ship it to you for free. That is a wonderful awesome. marketing strategy. And I didn't even have to leave my office. <laughs> um, so step four is to drink lots of water and lots of green tea. Also, white tea is wonderful. And we'll also talk a bit about alcohol. So let's start off with alcohol because there's not too much to cover here. But one of the number one questions we get asked about Smarter Science of Slim is, what about alcohol? So you can, of course, drink alcohol in moderation while you're going sane. Again, this is all about a life that you can enjoy and that's healthy and alcohol in moderation is fine. However, there are more sane and less sane uh, options for alcohol. Basically, clear 
alcohol is going to be better. Um, like a vodka is going to be better than like a dark malt liquor in terms of a sanity perspective. And you really want to stay away from mixers or just sugar saturated alcoholic drinks. And it's not so much the alcohol, it's the sugar that I want us to stay away from. And things like beer, uh, like wine is better. You want to just minimize the insane calories that come along with the alcohol. So, you know, like wine is going to be a good option. Like a vodka is going to be a better. Anything with sugar in it, not so good. So hopefully that helps you to be sane with your choices around However, let, let's just make clear that we're not proposing that you drink alcohol to be sane. <laughs> correct, correct. I mean, like, yes, to be to be clear, alcohol is is insane. Like, it is not sane, but we're not preaching perfection here. Right. So it's about sort of damage minimization and, um, like, for example, people say, you know, red wine has resveratrol in it. It's good. There's other ways you can get that substance. You don't need to go out of your way to drink alcohol. Carrie is exactly right. So yes, alcohol is not in any way, shape or form needed to be sane. And, and, uh, there's ways to make it more sane though. So anyway, that's alcohol, but here's what you should be drinking and drinking in mass when you go sane water, green tea, and also white tea, but white tea is much more expensive than green tea. So I like to focus on green tea, but if you like white tea, white tea is great. So I don't like to focus on either. Well, that's fine, Carrie. We'll talk about <laughs> that. But a couple, I want to talk about water first. So let's talk about water first. Because we often hear things like, drink water, it's good for you. But we don't actually know what people are talking about. And what I wanted to drill home here was that a couple things. So uh, water is truly beneficial um, for, I would say, at least two key reasons. The first is a lot of times when we feel hungry, we're actually thirsty. So making sure that we're fully hydrated and that like any time where maybe we feel hungry and it's an unusual time of day for us to feel hungry and we, we sort of get insane cravings, drink a giant glass of water and you'll be surprised how frequently that makes your craving go away. Another thing is that water does allow your body to burn fat more effectively. The more water we drink actually decreases the concentration of various substances in our blood which increases our body's ability to burn fat. This is called hypoosmolality, and it actually literally does help us burn fat. And in addition, when we drink cold water, our body needs to heat that water up. Um, you know, we don't have 70 degree water floating around in our body. It gets heated up to 98.6 degrees, and we burn about two calories for every ounce of cold water we drink. Not that we necessarily need to count the calories, but it, is, it certainly can't hurt. So it's an interesting note. And uh, Dr. Stuckey over at the Children's Hospital Oakland Research Institute tells us that increases in drinking water were associated with significant loss of body weight and fat over time. And like we said, it helps you to avoid insane foods. It helps your body to burn more fat effectively. And it's really just great for your health. Think of water as the single most essential nutrient for you to be consuming. Carrie, you look like you have something to say. This is The, the reason this is my Achilles heel is because... I don't know if this is just about being British, but in, in Britain, when I was growing up, we didn't drink water. We just didn't. I mean, in, in America, everybody drinks water. It's just what you do. You have water with every meal. You just, it's always there. You all just consume water. Mm -hmm. We don't do that in, in England. They, I think they do it more now, but I've been yep. gone for 12 years. But <laughs> when I grew up, I, I think in the 20 years I lived at home with my parents, I hand on heart never drank a glass of water. Wow. And so we we had a product called squash, which is concentrated fruit juice, sugar fruit juice, and you, you'd pour an inch in the glass and then you'd dilute it with water. Oh, okay. So I was drinking water, but it was really a, a diluted sugar syrup. And <laughs> that was that was what I grew up that was all what English children grew up on was squash and then pop, but not to the same extent that pop is drunk here. So I don't like water. I never mm. grew up with it. I don't like the taste of it. And I have never been able to get over that. I just don't like drinking water. Yeah, well, and actually, I'm glad that you brought that up, Carrie, because if the choice is between um, drinking uh, no water or drinking water sweetened with something like, I think there's these, this product called like miso or something. I mean, there's all kinds of like, or crystal light or something where you can sweeten water with non-caloric options. My recommendation would be the the water. Like you, you've we've got to 
one, we have to keep ourselves hydrated. And two, we have to avoid drinking calories. Because if we're, so if we're not drinking water, I mean, this is exactly what Carrie just said, right? We're, we are going to drink something. So if it's not water, if it's not green tea, we're drinking something that is insane. I mean, you're not going to get vegetables in what you're drinking. You're not going to be getting protein in what you're drinking. And milk isn't a good source of protein. We can talk, we've already talked about that podcast. We can talk about it later if we have time. But so if you're not drinking water or green tea or co- like coffee, again, would, would be okay. You're going to be getting insane sugar. And that's, we got to avoid that. So my trick that I have found that makes it okay for me, it's still not my favorite thing to drink by a mile, but at least it's got me drinking water, is that I have half a glass of regular still water and then I put in, I top it up with this lemon lime, because I like lemon lime, mm-hmm. talking rain, yeah. which is a, a zero calorie, sh- zero sugar, mm-hmm. fizzy water. And I find that that gives it just enough of a, not really a flavor, but just enough of a something and a bit of fizz that makes it not seem like water to me. Yeah. That is how I've now started to to get my water in me. I think it's a great idea. Uh, uh, some other ideas, things that I've, I've done um, during the summer, which I really like, are uh, cucumber water. So you can do this just by putting cucumbers in water or you could like blend it. Like what, I, what I've done is taken a piece of cucumber and some ice cubes and some water and you just blend that for like a minute and it is so refreshing. You can do the same kind of thing with berries too, like um, strawberry or oranges. You don't make strawberry juice or orange juice, but you take like one strawberry and you blend it with two cups of water and you have strawberry flavored water. You know, same thing with like an orange slice. It's interesting, you know, you, some of the spas or salons you go to, they'll have big old coolers full of Absolutely. water, which they'll be floating orange slices yep. in all day. Yep. And it has that, just that, that essence. flavor to it, that essence in it yeah. that, that just, for me particularly, just makes it even possible for me to get the stuff past my mouth. Absolutely. Well, actually, that's, that, that's a good technique because what I wanted to talk about next was like ways we can ensure that we're drinking an optimal amount of water. And again, like we always say, doing better than what you're doing is, is, is good. And that's always a step in the right direction. But I do want to give people the sort of like goal to shoot for. And the goal to shoot for would be uh, a, like a gallon of water every day. And that's a gallon of like, if you want to make tea, if you want to mix it in with other stuff, it doesn't mean you have to drink a gallon of water. It just means you should get a gallon of basically water into your body every day, ideally, and one way to do that would be, you know, take a gallon jug, <clears throat> put some of these fruits in it, fill it up with water, and just try to have that be empty two hours before you go to bed. But two hours before you go to bed is important. Otherwise, <laughs> you're going to sleep very long. <laughs> so, And sleep is incredibly important. So never – sleep is like the only thing that's more important than water. So never drink water such that it compromises your sleep because your sleep is more important mm-hmm. if you have to choose. So a couple other rules to keep in mind is – if your urine is not clear, like your urine should not be yellow. It should be clear or it should be a very light yellow. If you're ever thirsty, <clears throat> that means you're already dehydrated. So you want to try to avoid being thirsty. And frankly, like we said, if you ever have room to drink things other than water or green tea or coffee, if you like coffee, that's fine too. You could be slimmer and healthier by drinking more water. Again, you don't have to be perfect. But just keep in mind, as a general rule of thumb, the more water, green tea, which we'll talk about in a second, you're drinking, the healthier you're going to be and the slimmer you're going to be, which is nice. That so. is nice. I have graduated from Dr. Full full Fat, I call it. Of course, there's no fat in it, but but <laughs> full Dr. Pepper to Cherry Coke Zero. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and I, I the goal is, and when I was gone, when I abandoned you <laughs> last week, um, I actually was soda free for a whole week it was very exciting nice of course now i'm back at work you know, <laughs> but i'm moving in the right direction but i the the switch from full pop to to zero pop was a great step love it i love it well let's talk about another option in addition to water and that's tea tea generally speaking is fan- like any kind of tea is good herbal tea fine good herbal tea doesn't have the same benefits of the kind of tea we're going to talk about now which is green tea So green tea, I mean, like everything you've heard about vitamin C being good for you, uh, green tea is is up there, man. Green tea has had a ridiculous amount of research done in it. And 
I'm going to quickly run through the benefits that have been associated with green tea consumption. I don't want to listen to this because I hate <laughs> green tea. We will talk I don't about, want to drink we'll it. We'll talk about ways to make green tea. And you're going to make And I love green tea. Don't it. make Carrie <laughs> bias you. A lot of people drink green tea. Actually, there's billions of people in Asia that drink green tea. Billions of people that drink green tea. So uh, green tea helps you avoid weight gain, cancer, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, dental issues, insulin resistance, viral infrec- infections, bone issues, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, kidney stones, eye issues, arthrosclerosis, low HDL cholesterol, inflammatory bowel disease. That sounds terrible. <laughs> Diabetes, liver issues, and bacterial issues. All of those things have been clinically studied and shown to be decreased if you consume green tea in sufficient quantities. Darn. <laughs> so a couple ways to uh, – because uh, let me – before we address Carrie's green tea issues, <laughs> which we will, <laughs> let me give you a bit of background on the glory that is green tea. So green tea actually comes from the same plant as black tea, which Carrie should be quite familiar with because black tea is what is very popular in Britain. It's also That's the what most, I grew yeah, up on. Black tea. Mm-hmm. They're both from the same plant, but they are processed differently. Actually, white tea is also from the same plant, but it is processed uh, differently as well. But the unique processing that green tea undergoes leaves it full with a, a substance called polyphenols, and especially the uh, polyphenol ECGC. And from a health perspective, these polyphenols are, are the key to these health benefits we've described. They are literally just this almost magical substance uh, when studied. So, uh, and, let's, and let's also be clear when we talk about uh, helping us to avoid weight gain, the body fat burned by green tea well outweighs the body fat burning effects of the small amount of caffeine in it. When it does have caffeine, we'll talk about that. It's about the fifth, it's about one fifth of the caffeine you'd find in a standard cup of coffee. But researchers actually suspect that green tea's unique fat burning effect, I mean, if you look at many of these fat burning pills or supplements you can buy, one of the primary ingredients is green tea extract, is the interaction with green tea's polyphenols, caffeine, and the hormone noradrenaline in our body. So it's a real thing. It's one of the few substances on earth that actually has been shown to be an effective quote unquote fat loss supplement. But the key thing to keep in mind is that, you know, just like eating, um, you know, a half of a strawberry isn't going to give you the vitamin C necessary for vitamin C to do what vitamin C needs to do in your body to maximize all of the benefits green tea has to offer. We need to drink about, we need to like start at 10 bags a day. So 10 bags or more per day. And I know that might be like, oh my God, you want me to drink a gallon of water and you want me to drink 10 bags of green tea. I'm going to be peeing all day and I'm not going to have any money left over. And I'm going to be miserable. (laughs) Okay, so a couple things, a couple things. So my life is over. (laughs) A couple things. All of the green tea we drink counts as water. So earlier when I said a gallon jug, that's a gallon jug for all purposes. So like you can use that gallon jug to make three cups of green tea. It's not three cups of green tea in addition to the gallon jug. The other thing to keep in mind is there's no rule. I promise you there's no green tea police that are going to come knock down your door. If you brew six bags of green tea and six ounces of water and just drink really strong green tea or even shoot it just because you think of it more like a vitamin than as a beverage, that's fine. Like you can brew a lot of green tea in a little bit of water. So if you really don't like green tea and you think of it more as like a supplement or like a medicine that is going to heal you, you could take four ounces of water, put a bunch of green tea in it, boil it, and then like squeeze the green tea bags out, add some ice and drink it really quick, and you don't have to think about green tea for the rest of the day. The other thing you can do um, is if you're a green smoothie drinker, you can add that concentrated green tea Mm -hmm. water to your smoothie instead of adding regular water or maybe instead of coconut milk. Add the the small amount of highly concentrated green tea. That way you don't get the flavor. Absolutely. And other things, just the same things you would do to flavor water, you can do to flavor green tea. So, for example, you could add like Carrie uses this lemon-lime water to mix with her water. She could mix that with green tea. You could put crystal light in your green tea. You could put – you could make strawberry green tea. You could add lemon juice to your green tea. Like there's all kinds of things you could do also just to manipulate the flavor of the green tea itself. The other thing I found is – and I I don't remember where I read this – but I, I did try it, and if you cold brew instead of hot brew, mm-hmm. the flavor is milder. 
you get all the benefits, but it's milder. So what I've started to do now is put in my 10 bags in six ounces of water, leaving it overnight, then taking the bags out in the morning mm -hmm. instead of making it with hot water. And the flavor is... Much it, milder. It, it's milder, it's not as bitter, but you still get the same benefits. And then if you put that in your smoothie, then it's almost like you're not drinking it, but you're getting the benefits. Absolutely. So that's kind of hydration. That's helping with the taste. <clears throat> Caffeine is also something to think about. Green tea does have caffeine in it. It has one bag of green tea has about 30 milligrams of caffeine in it. To put that into perspective, a, a standard coffee has about 100 to 150 grams of caffeine in it. So we're talking like you'd have to drink five bags of green tea to equal one cup of coffee. However, if you're just trying to steer away from caffeine completely, decaf green tea is just as good for you as caffeinated green tea. So you can get de decaf green tea if you like. So just something to think about. Generally speaking, up to 300 milligrams of caffeine per day is fine for you. So you could technically drink 10 bags of regular green tea and be well within the healthy caffeine limit, but there's decaf green tea. So if caffeine's an issue, it's not an issue. You drink decaf green tea. And Did then, I just talk myself into drinking green tea? You made it sound like you're green tea ready to go. It's How raring. did that happen? <laughs> Well, it's carry, it's it's goodness. And I think it's like a lot of things where you acquire it. I mean, most people when they drink beer or wine for the first time are like, this is terrible. Um, but those those are widely consumed beverages. So I think we can acquire taste pretty easily. So the other thing is um, overspending. So when you're consuming 10 bags of green tea a day, I mean, think of green tea a little bit like wine. There's wine that costs $1,000 a bottle. There's also wine that costs $2 a bottle. And there's green tea that costs a couple dollars a bag. There's also green tea that costs a couple cents a bag. So for our purposes, for thinking of green tea almost like as a medicine, we don't need to spend a lot of green tea. My technique for getting my green tea very inexpensively is I actually go to amazon.com. They have a, a cool feature where you can subscribe and save. And just do a search for Bigelow decaffeinated green tea and look for the 40 count boxes. They sell them in packs of six. And you can do the sign up and save program where they'll ship you six boxes of 40 count tea bags, like once a month or once every two months. And it's discounted and it gets delivered for free. And it's awesome. It amounts to being like eight cents a tea bag. So you could do these 10 bags of green tea for less than a dollar a day, which is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So that's pretty, that's pretty easy. And um, like we said, uh, the other thing, you know, we talked about ways you can make it <clears throat> taste better. Green tea like coffee will stain your teeth. Any kind of tea will stain your teeth. So an easy way to avoid that is to drink it through a straw. It will not stain your teeth if it doesn't touch your teeth. And the straw makes it not touch your teeth. So I always try to drink my green tea through a straw. Just a, another option for people. And um, again, green tea water is such a key, t key thing for us to be consuming because I mean, a lot of people would say that really if we just stopped drinking calories, we would – I mean, that 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 would go a long way to solving the problems we have in this country. Like if we stopped drinking fruit juice and and colas and all this sweetened garbage, like if we just uh, uh, didn't drink calories, but man, to be we'd be – But to be clear, it's, it's not really the calories. It's the sugar. It's the fact yes. that they're calories in sugar. Yes, yes. I mean, certainly, yeah. yeah. Because we, we don't, don't want wanna... people to focus on the calories. We want people to focus on the type of calories, the sugar Absolutely. that's the problem. Yes, yes, that is true. It is also not a good <laughs> idea to drink 400 calories of, of, uh, yeah, of nonsense. Yes, that is true. The nonsense is the bad thing. So, yes. Thank you for clarifying, Mike. <laughs> The, See, uh, I'm a good study. You are a good I, I study. I pay attention to what you tell me. No, well, it's, and the reason I just bring this up, Carrie, is like I think the statistics here that I'm, I'm looking at are in 2002, the average American was, was getting about 400 calories per day from insane beverages. I mean, so that's the insanity causing the clog plus 400 calories, which, again, we don't want to count calories, but to be clear, when you drink calories, they don't satisfy you. So if it takes you... 2000 calories to be full and you drink 400 calories, you're going to overeat 400 calories because it's not going to fill you up. So any calories you're drinking are going to fatten you. That's a way to think about yeah. it. I mean, they're, they're going to. So yeah, I mean, the Robert Pollenberg over at Harvard University tells us that the average American today gets more than 450 calories per day from beverages. Beverages today provide twice as many calories as they did in 1965. 
And another really interesting pivot on this data carry, <clears throat> if we look about 100 years ago, we would consume the amount of sugar in one cola, I think it was like once every five days. Today, we consume the amount of sugar in one can of cola once every like five or seven hours on average. So it's just a startling increase. So that's step four. The last step, step five, we've already kind of touched on, but we just really want to formalize and call step five is do what works for you. It's perfectly reasonable to reach this point and just be like, I can't do all of that or I don't want to do all of that. No problem at all. What we want to outline here is like, here's the guideline. Here's the goal. Here's the gold standard. It's a spectrum. Insanity is on one end. Sanity is on the other. If your goal is more ambitious, you go further towards the sanity side. If your goal is to do it more quickly, you go further towards the sanity side. But if you have more modest goals or if you have a longer timetable in mind, you know, you can do what works for you when it works for you. And the other thing that I find a lot of people struggle with, or that they've told me anyway, is is when they mess up, mm -hmm. when they have a moment where they just, that chocolate bar just reaches out and grabs them. Or it, it's not the end. Just, yep. you know, you ate it, you did it, don't feel bad, just know what it did to you. And then, you know, the next hour, the next meal, the next day, you just get back on the same stuff and off you go. You can't allow yourself to, to trip up because you had a weak moment. Just, you know, because you're still that much further ahead than if you hadn't gone sane at all. So a slip up is not the end of the world. Absolutely. And, and thanks to wonderful people like Carrie, I'm trying to do a little bit of this myself. There's other great resources on the internet. There's very little that we can crave that we cannot uh, enjoy sanely. And I think some of the reasons we slip up potentially is like if we try to go cold turkey and just be like, if I tried to give up chocolate, the flavor of chocolate, I would go bananas. So I don't. I just find ways to sanely enjoy chocolate. And I enjoy it daily. And because of that, I don't, I don't go bananas because it's not like, you know, you're abstinent. Well, okay. Like that's ah, like, I don't, right. you know, saying I can never do it ever again. Whereas right. enjoy it. <clears throat> like for example, if you like chocolate and, and I mean, there's a bunch of recipes on the smarter science system website, but for example, 85% dark chocolate is way better than milk chocolate. Right. So maybe just switch to that. And then when you become used to that, you can try something which is just like more of a homemade, like almost pure undutched cocoa mixed with some almond butter and you're just in heaven right and it's i mean because that's basically it, what it's I a do. scale and uh, as jonathan says you know if milk is your thing switch to to a low cocoa solid dark and then move up so start with a 40 percent, mm -hmm. then move up to a 50 a 55 60 until you get up to 85 i you know there, there's ways to do it or i'm i'm working on a bunch of recipes including chocolate ice cream what? that that use chocolate without the sugar in it. Yep. So I'm going to be baking with 100% uh, cocoa solid chocolate. What well, I'm going to make it work. Well, I, I, for me personally, I find that it's the, it's the chocolate. I've personally found that. So I get sweet cravings all the time. Chocolate, like pure cocoa, I'm talking pure undutched cocoa and cinnamon make it go away. Um, like I wouldn't just mix that with water and drink it. Like I, the base is like a, a nut butter or a Greek yogurt or, or with a mix in some whey powder. But <clears throat> it's ironic because it's not the sugar. It's the chocolate that I mean, and, and you can experience this for yourself. Like if you crave sweets, eating a tablespoonful of sugar will not make the craving go away. It's I think it's the other stuff and we can enjoy that other stuff. We just got to be sane about it. And even I mean, the. There's a lot of diabetics in this country, and because of that, there's a lot of diabetic products out there. They're not the best things for us. Like, they have a bunch of artificial things in it, but, you know, there are chocolate bars for diabetics, and those are other options we could consider. That are not sane, <coughs> but they're saner. Exactly. So if you need a route that doesn't go from, from you know, from all to nothing, there's step baby steps you can take to get you closer to your goal. You don't have to do it overnight. You do not have to do it overnight, and there's a bunch of support for you. If you haven't already checked out the Smarter Science of Slim support group on the smarterscienceofslim.com, there are hundreds, maybe thousands at this point, of people sharing some awesome stories and, and just general ideas. So you're not in this alone. 
come on there, share your story. And actually, I mean, it's helpful too, because a lot of studies show that the more public we make this effort, the easier it is for us to stick with it because the more accountable we feel. So I think that's a good show. Carrie, how are you feeling? I feel great. You feel great? Well, I can't believe I'm feeling great about drinking water and green tea. How did that happen? I, I don't know, Carrie, but I'm I just, blame you, Baylor. Re- readers need to brace themselves <laughs> because next week we're going to start on how to exercise less but smarter. We're going to talk. I mean, you're equipped. We're equipped with sanity now. But we've got the whole other piece of the puzzle, which a lot of people find just to be the most like – Weird. Weird because, I mean, people kind of get, yeah, like, okay, eat nutritious foods. I get that. Cool. But we we will actually show the incredibly clear science. Like, it is so clear and it is so proven and it will, it will, it will be common knowledge in 20 years. Like, it will be. It's just cutting edge and no one uh, in the mainstream really knows about it yet, but people in research circles do, about how you can exercise less – and get better results. And we'll, we'll prove it biologically, we'll prove it physiologically, and it will really, it will transform your body and it will transform your mind. So this be sure is to tune in. This is the best thing in the whole world. <laughs> Gary's overselling it. anyone, anyone that has listened to this podcast from day one will know that exercise is not my thing. It's not her thing. And also, so there's two, so for people who don't like exercising, you can do this regardless of your fitness level. The other thing is for people like me who used to like exercising, but then got burnt out on it, the ability to get the same results or even better results you used to get in like a fifth of the time is incredibly liberating. And you can use that time to make sane recipes or spend time with your friends and family or do a better job whatever. at work. I don't know, whatever, read a book. Whatever else, whatever <laughs> else fun stuff you want to do. Floats your, but certainly funner than sitting on a freaking treadmill and, you know, what, boring yourself to death. So anyway... Jonathan Baylor, Carrie Brown, we are living the smarter science of slim. We're excited for next week, and we'll see you then. Wait, wait, don't stop listening yet. If you like the podcast and if there's other ways we can help you, please join us in the Smarter Science of Slim support group, which is freely available at the Smarter Science of Slim website, smarterscienceofslim.com. There you'll find all kinds of free recipes and success stories and just all kinds of fun stuff, like how to help your kids go sane and just great community content. And just one last thing before you go, if you wouldn't mind heading over to iTunes and up onto Amazon.com and leaving us a review and then going over to Facebook and liking us, we would hugely appreciate it. 